Welcome back to part two of our guide where we are building a free Google website for local service businesses such as plumbers, electricians or cleaners. This website is fast, mobile responsive and is designed to move website visitors to new business inquiries. We're going to add Google Maps to show your prospects that they are in our service area and to help Google identify and suggest our business to similar local customers. We will also provide as much detail as possible about our business trading hours, service area, and proof we are a legitimate registered business and that we are qualified and licensed to do the job. We will also add a request a callback button where visitors indicate their interest to find out more and provide you with their contact details. Let's first start out with a layout template that would be suitable to enter our map and business details. Now select map. Then choose the location or area you would like to show in your map. Click select. Click and drag your map into the layout that we added earlier. Enter your business name on the right hand side. And in the text area underneath, you can enter the details of your business such as trading hours, contact numbers, and license numbers, ABN numbers, and service area suburbs if you like. I'm gonna copy and paste these from a notepad that I have already entered the details into to save us some time. I prefer not to use my email address because a lot of bots out there can scrape the email address and you can end up with a lot of spam. So I prefer to use the request a callback button or a contact page with a contact form. That way we have a at least some form of control over verifying if somebody who's submitting a contact form is actually a robot or a real person. Once you've pasted the details in or you've typed them in, we can now go ahead and format them. I'm going to use subheading as the title format and I'm going to make each heading bold. Next I'm going to resize the map so it's a lot larger and the text will be more of a column of text. Next we're going to add the request a callback button for this Google Maps panel and it'll go just underneath the business details on the right. I like the request a callback button because it effectively brings the contact page in front of your prospect with a reason to use it as well. It saves your customer time and it's more convenient because your prospect can carry on with their day without waiting on hold or making them chase you. If they have to chase you, they'll probably go with your competitors. You're also giving permission to contact the prospect because they have given you their contact details and this creates a opportunity to lead with a positive customer experience. For example, calling back immediately or within five minutes when your prospect is still on your website. This can be more convenient for yourself as well if you have to follow up at a later time because your prospect is busy. You want to keep the fields minimal as this is just for callback purposes. Uh, it is just to get enough information to contact your prospect back. If you put any more fields in there, it can become too much of a resistance and your prospect may not enter their contact details. To create the request a callback button, we will also need a form and we're going to use Google's free forms service. So first let's go to forms.google.com then click on the plus sign to create a new form. Enter the title of the form. In this case, I'm going to use Contact Botany Plumber. The first field we're going to request is the prospect's name. And we also want to make this a required field. Next, we're going to make a copy of the first field and we're going to call this one phone number 
You can see by entering the name of the field phone number, Google's already determined that we are going to need a number to be entered into the field. I'm going to change this to regular expression. I'm going to copy and paste some text, which will check to make sure that a phone number is a real phone number and not just uh, some random digits. I'll put this text into the accompanying document and you just need to copy and paste this into that field of the form. This section allows us to provide a message if somebody doesn't enter the correct phone number. For example, if they just put 54321 and it's not enough digits, we will tell them to please enter a valid phone number. Remember to make this uh, not required. Then make another copy of this field. So we're going to do another one for their email address. Same as the last field, I'm going to copy and paste some text which is going to check to make sure the email address is formatted correctly and is a real email address. So if somebody just enters uh, Ben Dover and it, there's no at sign and no .com or .com.au, then this will catch that and say please enter a valid email address. and go to the next section and change the message if they don't enter a proper email address to please enter a valid email address. We can configure the form to use a color theme that's in line with the colors of our brand. And if these colors do not match the colors of our brand, we can actually add our own brand colors. I'm going to add my own brand color now. You'll need to know your hex code. And to do that, you either already know it because you've done some branding or you can use an extension to find out what hex code your brand colors are. Under this section, after somebody requests a callback, I want to leave a confirmation message saying thank you for contacting Botany Plumbers and that we will reach out to you shortly. Next, we can add an add-on and this will allow me to receive notifications when somebody has submitted a contact form. And this is great because once I'm notified, I can respond very quickly. And basically I receive an email uh, that somebody has submitted a request for callback. I can also configure my phone so that when I get this particular email, I get a notification on the phone. This add-on is called Form Notifications and it's free. Once the form notifications is installed, let's go ahead and start configuring it. I'm going to set this so that I get a notification when I receive a form response and I would like to be sent one with every response. You can also set this so you only receive a notification after three or ten responses, but in my case I would like it for every response. And I would also like to switch on a thank you email. So when somebody has submitted a form that I have a message to thank them for submitting the form. So the subject of my auto response email is going to be thank you for reaching out to a botany plumber. And in the body of the email, I like to also manage the expectations. So in this case, I will say we typically respond within 15 minutes of receiving a notification. Now, this obviously will be during business hours, unless you are a 24 hour uh, business. But uh, during business hours, you could add that as well. But I think in this case, it's kind of um, expected that the response time would be during business hours. Next, we're going to create a link so that when we click on the uh, request a callback button, this link will go to the contact form. I'm going to shorten the link and I'm going to copy it.
then I paste the form link into uh, some text, which I'll use to create the callback button. Under responses, I'm going to create a new Google Sheets, which is basically a spreadsheet. Anybody who contacts you, their contact details will automatically go into this spreadsheet so that if you have to go back and look up who contacted you on a particular date, you can see that. Now I'm going to copy the text which will create the request a callback button. You, uh, you will find this in a, the accompanying uh, Google Doc and I'm just going to copy and paste this and you'll see how the button is created. Just be sure to choose embed code and not text. I'm going to resize the button so that it fits nicely in the Google Maps panel. Next we're going to check out how this looks uh, by going to the preview mode and we're going to test this out. You can see it in mobile view but I'm going to test this out in desktop. Scroll down to the request callback button and click it. Let's go ahead and enter a name. If we didn't enter a name and try and submit we would get a please enter your name because it's a required field. I'm entering an incorrect phone number on purpose just to show you what happens when somebody doesn't enter the correct information. You can see the error message that comes up, please enter a valid phone number. So I have to go back and change this. Even with digits, it still doesn't work unless I've got the correct number of digits. So let me try again. It seemed to work that time. Great, let's try the email address. Okay, I'm testing the email address. If I don't enter the correct format for an email address, you can see I get an exclamation mark and a warning saying, please enter a valid email address. Again, I've been requested to enter a valid email address because I have the ben at Dover, but I, it's not a correctly formatted email address. I need a .com or .com.au or a dot .something for a valid email address. Okay, everything looks good. Let's submit. You can see the thank you message. Uh, thank you, a botany plumber will reach out to you shortly. Since we've requested a callback, let's go into our email and we should be able to see a new email notifying us that somebody has requested a callback. And if you open the attachment, you'll see it's a spreadsheet showing the date and time this person contacted, their name, their phone number and their email address. Congratulations, you've successfully completed this mission. We have Google Maps and we have your business details and we also have a request to callback button which uh, we have just proven works and it's also building a list of prospects or customers for yourself so that you can see their contact details in your spreadsheet and you can, if they are happy to, um, to be on your email marketing list, you can provide further offers and discounts to, to your group of customers. I think that adding the Google Maps along with the details of your location or service area will really help in building trust with your visitors and, and with Google. Visitors already recognize, use and trust Google Maps. And if you add your location or service area on the map, Google will show your business to people who are searching for similar products or services that are located nearby them. You also get some SEO benefits, such as keeping your visitors on your page for longer as they zoom and scroll around the map to work out how far you are away from them. Google sees time on page as an indicator that you are providing valuable information and therefore helps promote your business. In the next video, we want to look at how can we reduce the risk for this prospect who's never used or heard of you before and now they do need your services but they don't know if you can do the job, if you're trustworthy. They know you're affordable because we've told them your price is at least an indicator. So in the next video, we're going to look at a money back guarantee and also providing some simple testimonials through video. An alternative to this would be to start doing some Google reviews or to increase the number of Google reviews. 
I'll do another video on that to show you how to do that effectively so that you can build a strong Google review as well as Facebook reviews. There's a technique and a strategy to that, but for now, that's all I have for today. Thank you.